Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm going to be talking about drawing from references. This means looking at a picture or something in life and trying to draw what you see or take inspiration from it. There are many ways to use references, I'm going to be talking about some of the ways in this video. So let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk about four ways to use references. Trace. This one sounds bad, but I don't mean tracing the picture, just let me explain in a second. <laughs> Studies. Look at and put away. Many references. Sometimes I get asked where I find references. I often look on Pinterest like many other artists. I don't know, Pinterest is just a really nice place to find references, especially for clothing. The internet is kind of the easiest way to find reference pictures, but you can also look at books, magazines, life, or create your own references. Now I am mostly going to be talking about using references for drawing people and poses, but many of these things can still be applied to other things. Now let's talk about the different ways I use references. The first one is trace. Now this one sounds bad, it sounds like I want you to find a reference and just trace it, but that's not what I mean. Let's say you find a reference picture of a pose you really like, but you're having a hard time breaking up the reference into simple shapes or understanding the pose. What you can do is draw over the reference and break up the pose into simple shapes. This can help you better understand the pose. Then on your drawing piece of paper, try to mimic those shapes. There are many ways you can go about tracing over the reference image. If you are working digitally, you can lower the opacity and then draw over it on a new layer like I did here. I decided to do this digitally because I was feeling lazy and I didn't want to have to print things out. <laughs> if you work traditionally, you can lower the opacity and then print out the reference picture. Or if you have a reference picture, you can trace over it with a light box or hold it up to a window. I think this method is good for beginners because it can help you get used to simplifying the body into simple shapes. Then over time, you'll be able to do it yourself without needing to draw the shapes over a picture. Number two, studies. When I'm doing studies of reference pictures, I'll often keep the picture in front of me and I'll keep looking at the reference pretty much until I'm done with the study. I'm often trying to sort of replicate the picture in my style. I often only do studies in my sketchbook. When it comes to making finished illustrations, I will often use references, but I like to use many references, that way the picture is more my own. For this picture, I was trying my best to replicate the angle of the shoulders and the head. The head is kind of facing towards us and the body is kind of twisting away from us. I always have a hard time with poses where the head is facing a different way than the body is, so I feel like this was a good thing to study. When I was younger and I first tried drawing from references, I would try to just jump in and copy the picture line for line. However, I find this doesn't really work well for me. Uh, instead, I draw how I usually draw by using guidelines. I draw the picture in simple shapes. Doing this over time also helped me get better at sketching the body and after a while I was able to do it without references. So for this picture, I start out with a light sketch, and once I feel like I have things sort of where I want them, I'll start darkening my sketch. While drawing, I try to keep in mind the distance between parts of the picture. I'll also look at the negative space, like the distance between the person's hair and her shoulder. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm trying to draw the picture in my style. Because my characters have different proportions than real people, I try to keep that in mind as I'm drawing, and I try to adjust the proportions the best that I can. This often means I draw the body overall kind of smaller. I make things like the neck thinner and I draw the face how I usually do. For this I decided to make her happy just because I wanted to. I also didn't put the pattern on the sweater. Maybe I should have challenged myself to do that but I didn't feel like drawing the pattern. When I do studies of pictures I try my best to keep looking back and forth between my drawing paper and the reference. Sometimes I'll think I'll know what the picture looks like or I think I remember what it looks like but I don't. <laughs> because I'm not looking at the reference, I start to stray from the reference. This isn't a bad thing, but sometimes things will get a little wonky, like the pose or perspective, and the whole point of the study is to learn from the reference. And if I'm not looking at it, I'm probably not learning much from it, I'm just drawing inspiration from it, which is the next way you can use references. Number three, look at and put away. Now as the name suggests with this method, you look at a reference, study it, and then put it away. When I do this, I'll often study the picture for around a minute, maybe more, trying to note on the important parts of the picture and what they look like. Then once I feel like I've looked at the picture enough, I put it away and try not to look at it again. 
So for this sketch, I had a picture of a lady wearing a hat and she had her head turned away from us. When I selected this reference, I thought to myself, are you sure you want to pick this one? You'll probably have a hard time with the head and the shoulders. But I didn't listen to myself and I wish I would have. <laughs> I don't know. I don't like how this sketch turned out and I was having a hard time making the head make sense with the shoulders. Also, I decided to turn the head a bit more towards us because I thought that would be easier. But I wish I would have turned the head to profile view instead. But I guess it is what it is. But I still don't like it. <laughs> this look and put away method can be a good exercise to do if you want to get better at drawing things from your mind. Since you are forcing yourself to imagine and remember what the picture looked like. And then take that and put it on paper. The picture can also more naturally become your own since you're kind of just remembering the important parts in your mind. You're filling in all the smaller details yourself or changing things to how you want them to be. So even though I don't like how this sketch turned out, this method can be very good to do. Number 4. Many References My favorite way to use references is to use many different references to create one picture. I'll often use one reference for the pose, another for the hair, and maybe another one for clothes or the accessories. Then I'll take all these different references and mush them all together to make my own creation. So first I have this picture of a girl in profile view with foliage in her hair. I really like the leaves, so I wanted to take inspiration from those. I was actually having a really hard time sketching this sketch because it was on the right side of my sketchbook, so there was nothing for me to rest my hand on, so it was actually kind of tricky. <laughs> I wish I would have drawn it in a different spot in my sketchbook. Next, I used a reference picture for the braid. I only followed the reference really loosely. I wasn't really trying to replicate it perfectly. I don't really know if the hairstyle ended up looking like a braid, but I think it looks cool. And lastly, I used a reference for the chunky necklace. I really, really like this necklace. I feel like it looks really cool and it makes the picture a little bit more interesting. Once I had all the elements of the picture in place, I started darkening my sketch and used a green pencil for the foliage and the necklace. Like I mentioned earlier, using many references is my favorite way to use references. I get to take inspiration from real life, but then I take these many things and create something new of them. Before I end this video, I want to say thank you so much to my patrons including Rachel, Andrew, Swinky, Bonnie, Theon, Cash Money Matt, Julie, Nat from Academy of Games, Lucille, Robert, Tamalem, Pisa Terra, Anne, Magic Gamer Dad, Eduardo, AJ, Michael, Fulman, Adam, Narichan, Daniel, Panda Bear, Daniel, Ethereal, and Aaron. Thank you so much for being a patron and for your support. So those are the four ways I use references. I hope this video was helpful and that you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!